It's Ken Rakowski, Voice of Disruption. Welcome back. Of course, we're here meeting people that are disrupting their lives, the world. Freddie Ravel's joining us. And Freddie, first, awesome to see you again. Great to see you, Ken. Always Freddie, good. I've been watching you gallivant around the world using your keyboard as kind of the center of the conversation. Absolutely. Okay. So first, let's make sure people know who you are. I like to say or refer to you as the only white guy from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Am I right on that? Uh, it's it is true. <laughs> it is true. Well, explain that. Yeah. Well, and in, in, at the time that I got hired to be their musical director, which was in the mid '90s. Okay. Uh, at that moment, I was the only uh, I, the only white guy in an all black band. Happened to be called Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right. So. An incredible band. Carlos Santana. You have played with some of the greatest of greats. Do yeah. you feel now it's your breakout time? Absolutely. It is, right? It's, it's time. It's time. I've been waiting for, for a long time, and I've been very lucky to work with a lot of these brilliant, iconic people and to synthesize what I've learned from them and share it with the world. So when was that time when you were watching them perform, when you said to yourself, I want to be there? Do you remember that, po that moment? Um, I remember being... Uh, feeling that I was part of that team right. giving birth to what was happening on stage, saying that at some point, I'm gonna take and bottle this experience and show people who are not musicians necessarily what the magic is. That's why we have the keyboard in front of us. That's why the keyboard. Yeah, you have found a way to get in front of big brands, the IBMs, the Proc Procter & Gamble's, and discuss music, culture, and entrepreneurship. I don't know how you've done it, explain. Well, here it is in a nutshell. So all music is created with three things, right? What are they? You have melody, okay. you have harmony, and you have rhythm. These, okay. these three things. And anywhere you go in the world, and any culture that you listen to music in, doesn't matter whether you're in Afghanistan, doesn't matter if you're in Venezuela, doesn't matter if you're in Japan, there's going to be a lead instrument that deals with the melody mm -hmm. or a voice. There's going to be a collaborative energy that deals with harmony, and there's going to be something about time and tempo that is gonna deal with rhythm. Okay, how do you connect that to business? So melody, who's ever dealing with melody in music, is leading, right? Okay. We even use the terminology in day-to-day in -day life. We call them the band leader, right? right? Bruno Mars is the band leader, but he's also the lead singer. So right, into, right inside the syntax, we're using the terminology lead in music. So I use melody, I've taken that term, and said, well, if it's leading in music, what if we talk about it in corporate culture? All right, the melody of a company, the CEO, for example, mm -hmm. who's out there talking about the vision for the brand and his own, indiv his own individual vision, Elon Musk going out there and talking about it, is the melody. He's putting it out there. Show us some melody. Melody. So let's say you have uh, a, a melody that goes like this. That's uh, Amadeus Mozart, right? Got Wolfgang, it. right? The harmony would be this hand. Okay, harmony is at least two notes. One note, two notes, but I'm adding a third note. Okay? Got it. Harmony requires at least two, in this case, three. So I use harmony to talk about partners and teams working together, right? Okay. When you put the melody together, So that's the team, that's the leader. So this is a way for you to actually uh, draw this out in front of somebody. They could understand by putting these together. When they're off, what happens? Ah, well we left out, I'm glad you asked that Ken because you left out, we didn't, we left out rhythm, right? If we don't have rhythm, right, it could sound like this. The harmony is ahead of the leader. The team is moving quicker than the leader is, right? So there is no rhythm. Oh, okay. There, this is like a company and an entrepreneur putting together their vision. They got their people working. Maybe they're hustling social media. They're getting their message out, but the leader is in a different place. The leader's, so that's, that's bring the leader a in. musical, right? Make it happen. So if we bring in rhythm, right? And we think about. <laughs> there's our rhythm. We're going one, two, three. Three, four. Now, the way I connect that to life is 
That's your calendar. That's your deadlines. That's your, <laughs> that's your, your, the way you're sectoring time. So we put the leader, the CEO, in my right hand. We put the team in my left hand, and we respect that we have a deadline of 30 seconds or 15 seconds. I go. That works. Like All that. All right. Freddie Ravel is joining us, Voice of Disruption. <laughs> Freddie. What made you come up with this idea? And you're actually traveling the world, giving keynote speeches, getting paid a lot of money, mm. doing this. It's crazy, right? It's insane. It's it insane. really is. It's, it's completely like off the charts. I think what it is is that, you know, we got a left brain and we got a right brain, right? People love to figure out ways to take the creative muse that we all have and then take the analytical side of what we have and find ways where they can dance together. Okay. Because it's a much, much more fun life. You get to take your keyboard to IBM. Yeah. To Procter & Gamble. Yeah. And they pay you to do this. Oh, yeah. You had to sit there one day writing your talk going, all right, how am I going to integrate these two? Or was it just natural? Oh, no. It's been two steps forward, one step backward. Sometimes two steps backwards. I mean, it's, it's been a lot of trial and error, a lot of testing. Mm -hmm. There were times where I would say in the early days, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. In the early days, it was probably 90% music, 10% science and case studies. Now it's the uh, it's exact flip. Really? Yeah, it's about 90% talk and it's very customized. If I talk to IBM, I've done a lot of homework on them, mm -hmm. where they want to go. So and how do you brand yourself? Are you a keynote speaker? Is that what you are today? I'm a keynote speaker who happens to also be a performer. Right. So, what you do on a regular basis, you're always honing in your talent there. Easy business or hard business? Um, I think that you, I think it's like any business. You have to constantly test the market. You have to stay up to date. You have to stay current. Right now, for example, um, Satya Nadella, right, the, who's who's did this in, entire book now um, about being present and and making the the culture at Microsoft more human, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think the uh, the book is called Hit Refresh, for example. Okay. This book is a lot about actually showing new ways to think and be more compassionate. So my talk, I'll talk more about listening skills, which are connected to empathy and compassion, which is what Sai is talking about for Microsoft. Ah, okay. So uh, that's an example of taking a current trend and plugging it into something that is relevant to what's causing companies to succeed. I understand where you use this as a glue to bring that topic together with the music. But it has to be different for different genres and people you talk to. Mm -hmm. An older, more legacy type business is going to be different than a younger, more aggressive Silicon Valley business, right? Exactly. Is there one that adopts you faster than the other or are they all there and you have to customize it specifically for them? I, uh, there are certain songs that are iconic. Like what? New York, New York. For Show the, it to me. Right? Every American Everyone knows this. It. Every American knows this, but guess what? Everyone in Asia knows it too. Oh. There's a lot of music, especially like you start playing Frank Sinatra, the world has a feeling for that, right? There's a reason why the United States plays New York, New York when they drop the ball at Times Iconic. Square, right? Okay. There's a reason for that, right? Uh, rock and roll, boogie woogie, jazz, right? People like, this is boogie woogie. People like that. People like the way that feels. So that's like blues, right? <laughs> I don't know, every time I see you play, you transform yourself. Your body and your mind, everything is that sound is you. You own it. Mm. I love that. You do real-time art. <laughs> well, thank you. It's real-time art, and I, I, I'm envious. I, I wish I could do something like that. As you continue honing into your skills and taking it to the next level, does this connection with music become more than just a talk? Is there a way you could actually create a platform to enhance the skills of people that work for those businesses to use music to become better? Absolutely. We're, um, we're right now, we, we're, we're, the moment we're speaking right now, we're right on the edge of putting together what I would call the music code Bible, if you will. Okay. So that it has this breakdown of melody, harmony, rhythm, listening skills, and especially for this show, disruption. So give me an example then. What would be a disruptive type environment utilizing music? You ready? Yeah. I knew you were going to do that. I was waiting for that. I mean, does it get more disruptive than that? Yeah, but that was just 
everything thrown together at the same time. Well, that's what often happens. Yeah. We all turn on the computer and we go, oh my God, this is happening. This is happening. And we're all shocked by the way the news hits us. I mean, the, you know, the, some of the, I don't want to even name the events, but those tragedies that happened, like, well, okay, the event in Vegas, for example, that happened yeah. just, what, three weeks ago. That's, this is horrible. This is, this is how we feel. We all feel like, garbage when we see that. We all feel like, how could humanity be invaded on such a deep level, right? But in music, you could take something like this and you could remove two of those notes and you can make beautiful music. So here are the notes I just hit. And I'm hitting all of them. If I remove, let's say, this note, and now I have this, and I remove this one, and I just keep these, I now have. You turned chaos into beauty. That's it. That's it. So, Freddie, people want to hunt you down, find you. Where do they go? FreddieRavel.com. What inspires you? Life inspires me. Yeah, I know life inspires you. Your kids. My children. The way you see life today, because life is different today than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. You're in a new phase of life, aren't you? Absolutely. And it seems like you've become more creative with that. I think uh, the most important thing that's happened to me, especially recently, is putting boundaries. There's a very famous composer from Russia, Igor Stravinsky, who said, give me boundaries so I can be free. Oh, that's powerful. Wow. And I think understanding boundaries, which has been a big, you know, I I've tend to live very big like this all the time. Now I'm very precise about how I present ideas and deliver. And yeah. that's been a, a huge shift for me. Freddie Ravel, do me a favor. Give me some outro music real quick as I, I thank you. Hit the keys. Let's, let's say goodbye to everybody as they have uh, hung out with us on the show. Freddie Ravel has been joining us. We've heard some great speakers. Come on, let me hear some music, Here Freddie, go. go. Freddie v Ravel, thanks a lot for being part of the show. I also want to thank, uh, let's see, Dolly Singh for giving us an idea what it takes to disrupt yourself. Papa Joe, of course, he's taken the impossible and made it I'm Possible and Puna Mahajer. We're Voice of Disruption. We're here with you every single time to help you disrupt yourself. I'm Ken Rakowski. Thanks a lot for being part of the show. Thanks, Ken. <laughs>